Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton and in this video we're going to discuss some of the more recent discoveries coming out of James Webb Space Telescope when it comes to bizarre unexplained exoplanets or planets discovered in the last few years that just don't really make a lot of sense. With all this achieved as a result of incredible technological advances when it comes to James Webb and when it comes to some other telescopes able to observe these distant stars and observe these exoplanets orbiting around them. In essence, helping us understand how many of these planets evolve, but also changing our previous assumptions about various exoplanets, and once again reminding us that the universe can sometimes be just a little bit strange. And so let's explore these oddities together, focusing on five main themes. We're going to discuss atmospheric oddities, bizarre cotton candy planets, planets that just should not exist at all. We're also going to talk about planetary system evolution, and of course discuss the idea of habitability, could life exist somewhere out there? And so first, atmospheric oddities. Although in this case we're not going to be discussing planets similar to what you see right here. Instead, planets that seem to be really bizarre. With some of these planets almost resembling something out of science fiction. For example, steam worlds. This was a discovery from 2024. And so here, based on some of the most accurate observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers made a somewhat groundbreaking discovery from this exoplanet 98 light years away from us. And so what makes this planet kind of special is that this is really the first known example to us of what seems to be a steam world. A planet whose atmosphere is so rich in water vapor that it seems to have more water than hydrogen. And at the same time this is the smallest exoplanet known to us to finally have atmosphere officially confirmed. But here obviously this is not a water world. Instead the atmosphere seems to be superheated and seems to exist in a kind of a super dense state. There are probably no clouds here, the surface temperature seems to be at least 350 celsius and it seems to be basically literally superheated steam. But this is obviously also important for science. Here this is one of the first major steps in helping us understand how some of the smaller terrestrial planets or how such extreme environments and such unusual exoplanets evolve from typical terrestrial planets. Now we don't really have any answers yet, but the goal is to study this planet more to eventually discover all of this. And obviously a steam world is pretty strange, this was not the only bizarre discovery. We also have WASP-107b, a gas giant located 200 light years away from us that despite being the size of Jupiter seems to be only one tenth of its mass. But surprisingly, when analyzing this planet, researchers discovered that it seems to have a very strange asymmetry. It's now referred to as a lopsided planet, and that's because when looking at the east side and the west side, the atmosphere seems to be kind of different. And because this planet is also tidally locked to its star, here for some reason, some locations on this planet seem to have very different temperatures and very different atmospheric conditions compared to other locations. And so here not only is the day side and the night side are different, the west and the east seem to be different too. On the one side, the clouds and the atmospheric pressure seem to be much higher and even contain different types of materials. And this is the first time such an unusual planet has been discovered. Basically here instead of having everything mix, for some reason on this planet, one side is very different from the other. And right now this doesn't really have any specific explanations. But we do have some explanations from other planets such as WASP-43b. This was the first time ever researchers were able to map weather on a different planet. This was at a distance of 280 light years away, but this is also a hot Jupiter with some of the most extreme weather ever seen. Here the day side is 1200 degrees celsius, 2300 fahrenheit, while the night side is usually 600 celsius, 1100 fahrenheit. But I guess what's really strange here are the wind speeds. We have ridiculously fast supersonic winds, moving over 8000 km per hour, 5000 miles per hour, transporting heat from one side to the other. And these winds are so violent that they actually prevent methane from forming in the atmosphere, even though technically this planet should be filled with methane. And so compared to anything in the solar system, like Jupiter, this here is absolutely ridiculous. Some of the fastest winds we've ever seen anywhere. Essentially highlighting how certain atmospheres on other exoplanets can be so different from anything we imagined, which becomes even more apparent when discussing the cotton candy planets. The planets that basically defy physics as we know it. These are ultra low density planets, or technically the extreme examples of super puff planets, that have such extreme low densities that they're literally comparable to cotton candy. With one example observed in 2024 being 
WASP-193b. The second lightest exoplanet observed to date, and a gas giant that's one and a half times the size of Jupiter, but only 14% as massive. And so its density is 0 0.059 grams per cubic centimeter. That actually makes it even less dense than your typical cotton candy. And 23 times less dense than Jupiter. And the biggest problem right now is that nobody actually knows how this planet formed. None of the modern theories can explain this, and right now this seems to be a huge outlier. As a matter of fact, this planet is so extreme that it took astronomers over 4 years to finally figure out the total mass. Mostly because this planet is just so light that nobody could believe it. But naturally this is not the only such planet. As a matter of fact, the very well known system of Kepler-51 contains at least 3 super puff planets that are also extremely low in density despite being the same size as Jupiter. And so all of these planets seem to contain somewhat unusual inflated atmospheres of hydrogen and helium, representing one of the biggest modern mysteries when it comes to exoplanets. With the biggest question just being, how can they even maintain their structure despite being so light? And though some of the previous explanations suggested that maybe these are not actually that big, and instead what we're seeing are just rings around these planets, since so many have been discovered in the last few years, and since none of them seem to show signs of rings, the more likely explanation is that this is just a very low density planet that we cannot explain. Currently there is no mechanism explaining the atmospheric inflation, and only future observations with the James Webb can finally help us. But these are not the only planets we cannot explain when it comes to formation. Except for cotton candy planets, there are some other discoveries from other telescopes such as TESS, which even after several years still do not have any explanation. For example, the strange world Toy 1798c. The planet that completes one orbit in less than 12 hours and that basically receives at least 3000 times more radiation compared to planet Earth. And that means that any atmosphere that initially formed here has very likely been stripped away by this extreme environment. And there is no explanation what this planet is doing here or what's going to happen to it in the future. On top of this, we have a bunch of planets smaller than Neptune larger than Earth, which seem to be the most common types of planet in the entire galaxy. And these planets, mini Neptunes and super Earths, seem to be entirely absent from the solar system. Which kind of raises this profound question. Is our solar system just super unusual, or is there something we're missing about the planetary formation that would explain these bizarre observations? More than half of exoplanets discovered so far have basically been mini Neptunes or super Earths. And then we have this other puzzle. HR8799. At 133 light years away from us, this relatively young star system that's only about 30 million years old contains four massive planets on somewhat wide orbits. And while all of these planets are really massive, at least five to nine masses the mass of Jupiter, but also orbit pretty far away, anywhere from 16 to 71 astronomical units. And discovering these massive extreme planets so far away from the star, once again just does not have a good explanation for their existence or for their formation. Or basically here we have no idea how something like this would even form, or how star systems like this can exist. But all of this leads to this big question. So how do planets form and how do they die? And thanks to the James Webb, we're finally getting to get some answers. For example, there was a really groundbreaking discovery just a few months ago that finally directly imaged two gas giants orbiting around white dwarfs. A white dwarf is of course what our sun is going to become in a few billion years. And so here at a distance of 34 and 53 light years away from Earth, James Webb was able to observe two separate white dwarfs containing intriguing gas giants at a relatively similar orbit to where we usually find Saturn and Jupiter. And this is a really important discovery because it essentially suggests that planets similar to Jupiter could survive a red giant stage of a typical star and remain around the star system even when the star becomes a white dwarf. And though some of the inner planets might not survive, here this confirms that in 10 billion years from now, the solar system is still going to be around and it will still have planets. They're probably not going to be the same and might transform over time, but there's definitely going to be something. Which of course hints at the possible fate of the solar system billions of years in the future. But on the opposite end of the evolutionary spectrum, we also have some discoveries in regards to baby planets. EF Liporis B, a young gas giant that's only 23 million years old, seems to be the lowest mass planet with the smallest angular separation directly observed by the James Webb. A relatively hot planet, 480 Celsius, 890 Fahrenheit, containing metal-rich atmosphere, rich silicate clouds, and possibly a lot of carbon monoxide. And based on the observations, it seems that this planet has 
a very active atmosphere with very strong convection currents that basically mixes a lot of elements, resulting in something that does not have any specific layers. And so by studying these very young planets, this kind of gives us a window into what some of the early gas giants potentially looked like, and of course helps us understand how gas giants like Jupiter formed and evolved in the last 5 billion years. As a matter of fact, as we've discussed in some of the recent studies, billions of years ago, Jupiter was much, much larger and contained a much more powerful magnetosphere. And so it looks like here we're observing something very similar. But what about the biggest question? The question of habitability. Could life exist anywhere here? And while many of the exoplanets we've discussed and many of the exoplanets discovered seem to be clearly inhospitable, some of the recent discoveries offer some tantalizing evidence for potential habitability. For example, Gliese 12b. This was discovered in 2024, and it's an Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone 40 light years away from Earth. And what makes this planet particularly exciting is that it also orbits an unusually inactive red dwarf. Now, most red dwarfs, or M-type stars, are usually pretty active. They emit a lot of flares, and they have a high chance of stripping any planet off most of the atmosphere and anything else on the surface. But here this is not really the case. The Gliese 12 system seems to be kind of mild, and the radiation emitted is not very threatening, which seems to be the case for systems like TRAPPIST-1 and Proxima Centauri. And so here, this system is one of only two red dwarfs within 100 light years away from us that seems to contain Earth-sized planets with relatively minimal stellar radiation, making this one of the prime candidates for the potential search for extraterrestrial life. And also because it's so close to us, it means that future observations with the James Webb could potentially detect certain biosignatures, assuming they exist. But even exoplanets that are not habitable can still teach us quite a lot. For example, the previously discussed Gliese 9827d, the steam world, does provide certain insights into heavy, water-rich atmospheres that might help us understand what conditions are necessary to at some point form water-rich environments that might create habitable planets. And so here, even though we don't actually have any answers yet, by conducting additional observations with the James Webb, and by looking at even more planets, especially very strange planets, we might eventually collect enough evidence to understand what makes certain planets perfect for life. Although currently, we don't have any answers. But in essence, after all of these observations, the only conclusion we have is that the universe is really filled with planets that are quite different, and planets that seem to challenge our understanding while also expanding our imagination. From cotton planets to extreme planets containing superheated steam, and from planets that are just starring to planets that orbit ancient dead stars. But what's even more exciting is of course the fact that the journey is just starting. We've only confirmed less than 10,000 exoplanets in existence, and that's just a drop in the ocean. And so for the next 20 years, as the James Webb observes more and more planets, it's going to allow us to answer a lot of questions about how various planets form, if any of them can potentially contain life, and of course answer the question, how common are planetary systems like our own? So far, not a single star system out there seems to resemble the solar system. Which seems to suggest that maybe the reason Earth has life is because Earth is unique. And so does that mean that we're actually alone in the universe, or are we just looking at the wrong things? And so as we continue to explore these strange and unusual worlds, with time we're going to gain a deeper understanding of the entire universe and figure out if planets like Earth could potentially exist somewhere else. But until we get some additional answers, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can find all of the links and the studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon where you can actually find quite a few videos you might have not seen before and videos without any ads. Maybe support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt or by joining the channel membership. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.